Margarita, you're very welcome, bienvenida. Thanks for this interview. Um, it is a great pleasure to have you uh, at the International Literature Festival this year and uh, representing Colombian literature and Latin American literature. I, I hope that's not too much weight on your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here participating in the festival. So I'm very grateful. Um, I wanted to start with uh, Lo que no aprendí, it's a coming of age novel, um, because I think it's your most Colombian uh, work, um, from language to the time it's set in, the cultural, uh, pop culture references as well. Um, tell us about a, bit, a bit about that book. Okay, well, um I don't know if, if it is my most Colombian work, but maybe it, it feels that way because it is located in a geography and in a time that certain people, maybe certain generation, people who grew up in, in the 90s in Colombia may find it like familiar uh, because well, that was like a very particular time in, in, in my country. Mm -hmm. um, basically because of the narco traffic and all the culture that came with that political and economic phenomena and um, all the references and the observations of the main character which is a gear a, a, a very curious gear um, and and it, she like makes this these observations that are lateral observation because she's a girl she's a kid but then they are also very eloquent about what was happening in that particular month and that particular year. Yeah, those observations are in between adulthood and, and childhood. Like she is very, she's very sharp. On, on <laughs> yes, uh, and she's very, I guess that this is, uh, she's very curious. She wants to know everything and, and she's kind of, of making uh, her own uh, versions of whatever is happening in, in her surroundings. So I guess that I wanted to, to express how awkward it, it was to be a, a child in that time where our you know, values were changing so quickly and in a very radical way because of, of this whole thing that was happening. And everything that we given, have, have given for certain was like, it seems back then weak and, and malleable. Um, can I ask you how long was the novel in the in the drawer, like we say, like how was was there that the idea was there, and if that second part, which is kind of written from Buenos Aires, where you live now, is how it came to be or how it found a, an ending? Mm. Well, I must say that I I don't spend that much time writing a novel, but I do spend a lot of time. In the like correcting it in the in the Editing. correction process, I that is the, the part I enjoy the most, mm -hmm. um, and it, it it was like a long process, um, and I guess that this was the same the, the first time I did something that I kept doing in my later books, that was like I think that it is like deconstructing the, the story because in the in the first time I there is like the um, the written part the plot you know and then in the second part there is like the, the I, I I say that it's the unwritten part what, what you cannot um, understand uh, literally yeah. it is like my main concerns were in the second part. Um, and and this is uh, I guess that it was like the first time I did it in but in this novel it was like more obvious than in, in later books because what what I did in the second part was trying to reveal to the reader the the procedure you know like the method like like okay this is what happened or it may not be because what I was trying to say maybe it was that constructing um, memory, it feels exactly the same as, as constructing fiction, as writing fiction. It so is, It is a fiction of it our is, own, yeah. of, of course. So, so that was like the, the point, and I knew that, that the first part was like a container to fill with, with this sensible content. Um, 
we um, you have two books published in English. You you publish it in in English is Charco Press, um, and basically they they collected uh, short stories and a short novella in fish soup, and and the second uh, book is Holiday Heart, is more of a recent novel. Um, I wanted to know how involved do you like to get in the in the translation process of your books into English because I understand you, you yes. well you, you speak English uh, and how different the approach to those two books coming out in English was well I was involved in both of them I, I like to be involved because I think that translation it it's like very important but it is also like very risky like a very dangerous at some point because I guess you well you don't just translate words like in a literary way in a literal way but you you have to be able to like to recognize some of the again like the unwritten stuff things like that that are not that obvious like music rhythm characterization and all the the decisions that an author um makes um with with you know, like conscious decision, there are no accidents, never. So a translator must be, you know, able to notice that and to recognize that. And I find it like very difficult. Um, so I like to be involved, but I know that it, it isn't, you know, a thing that I can control in the, in the, in the final result. So, so although I was involved, I am never sure that it, it Gets we'll, to the point. Get there. Yeah. Yes, and um, uh, it was Charla Krum that uh, that translated yes, both she's books. Yes, she's great. She's great because I think that she she got some of the, of these things. You know, like some tone. Maybe is her age. Uh, I don't know. She's a, a young a young woman, and and she was like very. Um, um, I don't know. Like like he she has something that I guess translators must have it's like she has a good ear she is like very good in, in listening mm -hmm. so she can then like translate that music into something also mm -hmm. that's nice um this is your first time in ireland i believe uh but uh, you've done collaborations uh, through the embassy with with uh, a few different people here in ireland uh, one of them was uh, a master class last year with uh, the Irish Writers' Centre um, in hybrid writing and I, I was curious uh, to whether your background in journalism uh, has some influence into bringing you to that non-fiction fiction, fiction uh, writing that you are so into. <laughs> yes, well um, I, I guess that as a reader, as much as a writer, I like to like to locate myself in this like unstable songs, hybrid songs, but they're not hybrid just because they are between fiction and non-fiction. I guess that there's something else there that is like, um, I like this finding like a unique point of view of an author. Other people may call it like author literature where, where you can, you know, like recognize the author because of of, of, of his own characteristics and and uh, and the decisions again the narrative decisions that that he or she takes um, uh, are, are very like um, recognizable so uh, and, and they are like in in this zone that you you never know uh, like what is it what you are reading because it, they also like, how do you say like experimentate with with yeah. forms with narrative yeah, forms experiment, huh? uh, experiment with with that not only the the you know the content that the story itself the plot they have like something else so i like it this kind of literature this kind of, of pieces that are like rare and, and not not rare but but like unconventional i must say um, and yes, of course, journalism was like a very good training for me. I mean, you know, I, I, I remember especially this job I had in a newspaper. I had to, to write a very tiny, very teeny column um, 
two or two hundred and a half um, words maybe it was very little wow. <laughs> three times per week in the um, in the back cover of the newspaper and it was very difficult because it, it doesn't have any anything. topic yeah. because you, you have to go outside and, and look for something related to the city and try to do like a little scene or little situation with whatever you find so it forced me to look very close to observe i, I remember myself like creating this kind of frames so, so it will be easy to, to fill it with something like, for example, conversations I overhear, overheard in the table next to me or whispers in the train or something like that. <laughs> because you That's have awesome. to go out and recollect like voices of unknown people and do something with that. So I remember that like the most difficult job I had ever, uh, I ever had. Um, but also the, the most productive one because I, I think that it was like a very good training for, for, for my observation especially. I think, I think the best dialogue is the one you overhear on the train. <laughs> I, I <laughs> cannot, yes, and if you can bring that to a book then you're a genius writer. Yes. Um, tomorrow you'll be talking to Sandra Newman about your most recent book, Holly Hart. Um, which is a, it's a portrait of Lucia and Pablo, uh, two, uh, two Colombian uh, people that go to the US and they're successful, they have successful careers, uh, but their marriage is going through a huge crisis. Uh, I was really very interested in, in the expat community that surrounds them. Do you think uh, the judgmental uh, views we have in an expat community is directly proportional to um, the endogamic characterization of, of those groups, like we need each other. But, yeah. Well, in Holiday Heart, I, I guess I use some of my, um, an experience I had in the United States with these short-term writers residencies, and there I found out that um, Latin immigrants, especially, they are like very competitive between them. They they wanted to, they are like they have like this hunger of recognition. They they wanted to to stay there. I guess I I wasn't interested in staying there in the United States, but there were many colleagues that that wanted that, so they became like very competitive. And I guess they needed to be like together, as you say. But mm -hmm. at the same time, they 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 wanted to to, to be better than yes, than the other. Yes, of course. So I, I find it like very wild. I don't know the the way they relate to each other. So I guess I use that for um, the characterizations of Lucia and Pablo's relations with with their environment. Mm -hmm. Especially Pablo was very frustrated because. Uh, of you know his his achievements that weren't like enough for him and well so that's what i guess that especially in the united states it kind of thing of things happens because um <clears throat> it is a country that spent like a lot of of energy trying to to convince the war that they have room for everyone but we have plenty of proof that they don't so people, it's always like expecting that they will make it. And, yes, and, and there might not be a place for them. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. I think I think that's common to many countries <laughs> in Europe as well. I think. Um, I I wanted to to finish uh, with um, basically asking you a couple of recommendations, books uh, that you you have found <coughs> lately that have not blown in your mind, but expanded in some way, uh, something refreshing that you found? That's a very hard question. I know, Because yeah. I, I, I have, you know, like many, um, I have like a list that um, like managed to actualize itself like all the time. So <laughs> I, sometimes I said, oh, this book, and then the, the day after tomorrow I have another one. So I, I don't have like a canon, but I do have like references and I guess that when I want to feel like um, like comfort or to experience this kind of 
of reading that I like the most, the, the, the ones that shocks me in, in, in some way, I read poetry. I, I love poetry and in that field I do have today a few recommendations <laughs> that I love. Uh, one of them is Cristina Peri Rossi. She's from Uruguay and well, like everything she has written is really great. And then I love this um, Argentinian poet, Estela Figueroa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in my top today. <laughs> Um, I think you recommended Sofoco to me, um, <coughs> who is by uh, this this amazing short stories by Laura Laura Tigón. Uh, She's a young Colombian writer. She's so great. I guess that she just uh, have this book, uh, short story book Sofoco, that was published in Colombia by Laguna. That is a an indie publisher very nice i have also some of with them and and it it is great it is really different from what you have it's and um, it's so the language it's it's like so much reminiscence of colombian language i think it's 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 so rich yes i, I really enjoy that one and i guess i will finish now with uh, what's next margarita in english and in spanish what's coming next well I, i'm i'm about to publish a, a new novel in spanish it is called la encomienda and in english it would be out i guess next year it, it we don't have a title yet so if you have any <laughs> suggestion <laughs> um and and I, I i think that before the novel Charco Press, which is my, my publisher house here in English, um, uh, will we'll publish this uh, book of mine, Primera Persona, uh, that is like a collection of, of these kind of pieces I was trying to explain before, like this, um, they are not fiction or non-fiction, they are like in this in middle um, um, line. They, they of, call them different things, chronicles, essays, it's, it's, they don't have essays, a name anymore. Uh -huh. testimony, whatever and it but I guess that these books it, what I you know like tries to to make like an emotional map of a, of an of an, a narrator which is the same one in every piece and in different moments of her life trying to deal with situations um, depending on what circumstance she is and um, well, that is, I, I guess it will be out uh, next year. Well, thank you so much, Margarita. It's been a pleasure and uh, very good luck tomorrow. Thank you.